Hi everybody, welcome to a VG Leviathan video. My name is Dean and today we're going to get you started with your first water simulation using Blender 2.83. To get started we're going to open up Blender and we're going to select a new file under general. So that's going to just give us a basic file as you can see it's got a little cube so we're going to work with this. First thing I want to do is set up my file so that we can save it correctly. So we're going to click on File, External Data, and select Automatically Pack into Blend. And that's it. So the first thing we want to do is delete this cube. And then we want to put in a new object. To do that, we're going to say Shift and A. So we're going to select Mesh in our Add menu and we're going to go to UV sphere which will give us a nice little sphere as it says. The next thing we want to do is select object and then we're going to navigate all the way down to quick effects and select quick liquid because we want to make a liquid simulation. So there it is. So there's your simulation done and dusted kind of. I suppose you could but we don't want to. So just to see how it works, you can see there's like a whole bunch of little blue dots if we zoom in, then that's our water particles. So to see how they work, you could either click play or hit space, and you'll see that's how your water is going to look. It's going to drop your water like that. That's how your water is going to interact. But we don't want to do that. For this tutorial, we want to make flowing water, and that's what we're going to do. So let's have a look at how we're going to do that. So we want to change a few things here. First thing I want to do is change the size of my domain. So the domain is what tells your water this is where you're going to be. It kind of restricts its flow. So it'll only be within this square. I want to make the square bigger. To do that, you can select it over here in Blender 2.83. If not, we can go all the way over here to the collections, look for liquid domain, and select it by left clicking it. I want to scale it up and make it really big. So to do that, with it selected, I'm just going to click S. And that puts it into a scaling option or a resizing option. And you can just move your mouse around. So I'm not holding S, I've just pressed it once and I can move my mouse around. So this kind of looks like the size that I want. If you're new to Blender, and that is perfectly fine, to move around your viewport like I am, all you have to do is click your mouse wheel, hold it in, and move your mouse around, and then you can navigate. And zoom in by scrolling forward, and zoom out by scrolling backwards. So, I think this is alright, maybe a little bit bigger. And I kind of like that but I don't want it to be so tall. So to change that, I want to scale it down, but I just kind of like want to squash it. And to do that, we're going to come over here to the left-hand side, and these are our little tools, and we're going to look for scale. So we're going to click that button. So immediately we can see these three nodes over here. There's actually six of them, but we're only going to work with the three that are connected to these little lines here. And if you look over here, We'll also see on the top right hand, there's another representation of it. So you've got your x-axis, y-axis, z-axis. And that's how you're going to scale it. So z is kind of like straight up or down. Y is right or left. And x is forwards and backwards, depending on how you are navigating. So I just want to squash it down. To do that, I'm going to grab this little blue toggle over here and I'm going to pull it down and that's going to squash it and I'm happy with that. So that's pretty cool. All right, so now you see I've got all my particles over here which is a little bit weird. Do not worry about that because we're going to sort that out now. The next thing that we want to do is we want to change a few settings. So the first thing that I want to change is we're going to select our liquid domain. On the right hand side here we've got all of these icons we want to go over to physics properties then we want to scroll the way down again and then we're going to go over here by cache we're going to select type modular and they will see our particles have disappeared modular will allow us to change the settings of our liquid simulation 
So what I want to do next is we've got our start frame and end frame. So this is the start and finish of the information that it's going to hold for your water simulation. So it's only 50 frames, so I want it to be a little bit longer, maybe like 100 frames, and that's where it'll end. Then I want to come over here to my progress bar and also set the end frame there to 100. So that'll make sure that if I hit play, it's only going to go 0 to 100 and start over again, as you can see. So now I want to jump to the end point again, to my start point. Now we can get busy with the liquid. So we're going to select our sphere again. I want to change a few settings. So we're still in the physics tab and we're going to go over here to flow behavior because we've selected our sphere, which is the source of our liquid. And I don't want it to be geometry. When it's geometry, it just drops whatever shape you've got, in this case a sphere, it drops a spherical mass of water and the water will then interact with the bottom of your liquid domain. But I want this to be a flow of water, so we're going to select inflow. So that's going to pour water out, which is quite nice. If we left it like this, the velocity or the strength of the flow is pretty harsh. So I always like to just tone it down a bit. And the way you can do that is you can come to initial velocity, tick the box, come to source, and I like to make it 0.8. That's always a nice flow for me. And that's pretty much it. So whenever we've made changes, we want to go over here and we want to go to our domain and we want to bake data. But before I do that, I want to decide where all my simulation information is going to get stored. So to do that, over here by cache, I want to select where that's going to go. So I've got this that opens up this window and I want us to make a new folder for our project. So I'm just going to go straight to desktop. I'm going to make a new folder. You can see I've got a bunch of junk on my desktop. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to say water simulation. Nice and straightforward. Water sim, that is fine. And then I want to enter that folder, select accept. So there you can see it's going to store information there. Now we can go all the way to the top of our liquid domain physics properties and say bake data and you'll see our little progress bar going over here so what it's doing now is it's computing blender is saying all right so all these particles are going to interact that way and this way and that way and this way how they're going to move and now we can test our simulation so now we've got our particles that have appeared again so if we just click over here so nothing selected and we press spacebar it's pouring out our water very nicely and I'm happy with that however I want to move the source of my water and yes I can do that so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go select my liquid domain go to settings and I'm going to free the data free the information and when I do that whoop, no more information so let's move the sphere so I'm going to select the sphere go to the left select my move tool and I'm going to use these arrows to move it along the y-axis and the x-axis. So let's do that. So we're just going to click and drag it like this and like this. And I like that. And then I just want to bring it a little bit more up. And that's, that's pretty fine for me. I'm happy with that. So now that we've made a change, we're going to select our liquid domain, go to physics properties and bake that data again. So now we're just going to let it bake. You can see it's baking pretty quick, so if you've got a more powerful computer, this process will obviously go a little bit quicker. So let's let that bake. And it's done. Very nice. So now, if we jump back to our endpoints, we can have a look at how it's going to interact now. And I like this because it kind of has this wave that kind of comes back on it, onto it and it looks really cool once you've, if you render out the simulation or your animation. So it's really nice. Right, so I'm just going to pause that. So now I am happy with my simulation. Now we want to make all these little particles into water. How do we do that? So with our liquid domain selected, so you want to make sure that's highlighted, we go back to physics properties and we're going to scroll all the way down again. And this time we're going to look for mesh. So we're going to tick that little box by mesh, tick the arrow, and we're going to say 
fake mesh. What this is going to do is exactly what it says. It's going to take a mesh and wrap it around all these little particles and make it look really nice. And it usually just takes a few seconds. As you can see, the progress bar goes nice and quick again. The more complicated your simulation, the longer it's going to take. And there you can see exactly what I was talking about. All of our particles are still in there. If you look nicely, there they are. They've just been, they've just taken a mesh and wrapped it around it. And that's great. So you can have a look at how your water is going to look now. So there we've got something that looks a little bit more like a fluid. And that's our fluid simulation. And I'm happy with that. I really am. So let's pause that. Now we want to see how it looks. So to see how it's going to look, we want to go over here to the top right hand corner. And we want to select this little icon. And you'll see it says rendered view. So if we click on that, it's going to show us how our end product is going to look kind of. But now we can barely see anything. And that's because we need to change the render engine. So let's do that. So we're going to go over here to our icons again. We're looking for render properties. We're going to select that. Then we're going to go to render engine and select cycles. And it totally changes the look, as you can see. So you can let that kind of render out. It says path tracing sample 17, and it's going to count down until it's fully rendered. So you can let that just settle in a bit and you'll see. So this is more or less how our render is going to look. So there's a few things that I'm going to tweak, but the first thing that I want to do is I just want to select both our sphere and the water, and I just want to move it up. So I've already got that selected. So I just want to move that up a little bit. So if I go into our kind of mesh view, or if we hover over there, you'll see it says wireframe. We can see again, okay, just make sure everything's working fine. I'm happy with that. That's awesome. And that's perfect. So I'm going to stop it there. So let's go back to our rendered view. So it doesn't look very spectacular. So to amp it up a little bit, you can change our lighting. So we can move our lights around. So this is our little light. We can move it around, maybe until we get some reflections or whatever you want to do, you can really do that. You can also change the angle of your camera. The thing that I like to do is I like to change the type of light that it is. So let's, with the light selected, you can see over here in our collections, our light, I like to make it the sun. So let's do that. So there's, it's a much more intense light and you can already see we've got some reflections now. And I like to leave my sphere there um, specifically for the reason of reflection. It's really nice. You can see it's interacting with all the little bits of water. So now we can change the angle of the sun too. You'll see there's this little yellow button over here and we can move that around and we can change it. So if we do that, you can see the little yellow frame. And that's kind of how I want it because I'm going to be looking at it from roundabouts over here. Hmm. So we, I'm just going to let that render out, see if I'm really going to be happy with that. So it's really up to you how you want it to look. And then it's a matter of placing your camera. So to place your camera, you can get more or less into the position that you want to see it. So I actually want to bring this light like a little bit more down, see if that's not going to give me some better reflections on the water. It looks like it is. So you can change that up to exactly how you want it to be. So this is kind of the angle that I want for my simulation. Now, the background that you've got, this is the color that your background's gonna be, and we can change that. I like to make it a little bit more blue. So to change that, we go to our icons here on the right-hand side again, and world properties. And we go into color, and you can change your color up a little bit. So you can make it pretty much whatever your heart's desire. But I like to make it kind of blue, or aquamarine or whatever this is and then make it a little bit more light not too light and then you can just let it render out a bit again because your lighting has changed so i'm happy with that or maybe maybe not let's make it a little brighter maybe yes so that's perfect all right so now we want to get our camera into position and i kind of want my camera in this exact position that i have now so navigate around your water 
And then once you've got the perfect spot, you simply press Control, Alt and zero, and that's gonna snap your camera in. So now you can see what is gonna render. So I need to zoom it out. To get out of camera mode, you just click your mouse wheel, and then I'm just gonna zoom out a little bit and do that again. And we're almost there. So I'm just gonna move that a little bit like that and out one more time. And there, I'm quite happy with that. So now I can't see my sphere, but I can still see the reflections of the sphere in the water. If you wanna see how your image is gonna look, all you have to do is press F12 and it'll render that single image out for you. And this will give you a preview of what your water is gonna look like. So there we have more or less what our render is gonna look like. Well, this is exactly what the still frame of our render is gonna look like, and I'm pretty happy with that. Uh, we can't see our sphere because I have cut it out of my frame and the water's looking really nice. So that brings us to the end of part one. But before we finish off, the first thing we wanna do is we wanna save. And you can pretty much make your title whatever you want. This is Water Sim. And we're going to hit Save. And that brings us to the end of part one of Water Simulations. In part two, we're going to be looking at how to add some particles, how to put bubbles in our water, some spray, some foam. And we're going to look at making it even more realistic.